Radiologic Technology, an X-ray program at Midlands Technical College. What is radiologic technology? It is a clinical branch of health sciences involved with the diagnostic and therapeutic applications. It is concerned with imaging the internal bones, organs, and other structures of the body. It has a wide variety of specialized modalities, including CT, MRI, sonography, interventional, nuclear medicine, mammography, radiation therapy, and other parallel fields. Specifically, the MTC RAD program focuses on diagnostic X-ray applications, including regular diagnostic, orthopedic, trauma, fluoroscopic, and surgical. Hi everyone. Thank you for coming today. I'm here to answer your questions about medical imaging and radiation therapy. My name is Elizabeth. I'm a radiologic technologist and I'm also a teacher at the university. So how can I answer your questions? I have a question. Can radiation be kind of dangerous? How do you protect yourself from it when you're around it every day? So that's a very good question. Yes, radiation can be dangerous and what we learn in our field is that we use tools to protect ourselves. One of those tools is known as the radiation monitoring badge and that badge will record the amount of radiation that we're exposed to while we're around the patient or in the room as well as in the department. The other tool that we use, it is known as time, distance, and shielding. What that means is we use the shortest amount of exposure time, we use the longest distance from the radiation source, and then we also wear what is known as lead line aprons, and our rooms are lead line so that the radiation doesn't get outside of the room. There is so much cool science in this profession. You must have to be a super genius to do this. How long did you go to school and what did you study? Technologists go to school for typically two years, but nowadays it's moving to even a four-year or bachelor's degree. And the subjects that we take are sciences and math. So specifically, we look for algebra, physics, we look at anatomy, physiology, biology, and then towards the end of our training or our schooling, we actually even get into pathology and cross-sectional imaging. Do you like your job? What kind of person would do well at this? I love my job. And I've been doing this job for a very long time. And the type of personality that would get into this or like this is a person who is very people-oriented, a person who likes sciences and technology, a person who likes to work well as a healthcare team, and a person who can give of themselves compassionately to others when they're sick. Technology changes pretty quickly. How do you keep up with it? In our field, we do yearly training, and that's continuing education in our field, and then we also have to continue to pay attention to the changes that are going on in the technology. So we learn a lot about computers, and we learn a lot about what is happening in the field of healthcare, while we're also learning and keeping up on our, what is known, continuing education. Do you work closely with doctors? Yes, we do. So a doctor will order a medical imaging exam. They use those exams for the diagnosis. We provide the image, they then do the diagnosis and the treatment. So as radiologic technologists, providing an image that is of high quality is very important for us. We look to our schooling, we look to our training, we look to the team approach with all the other healthcare workers with us, our nurses and our technologists, to provide that patient with the best care and hopefully they get feeling better. Thank you all for your very smart questions and good luck on your rad quest. Thank you, Elizabeth. We think you're a pretty rad teacher. Thank you. What traits make a good radiographer? A good radiographer needs good time management skills, strong organizational skills, an intrinsic passion to help others, self-motivation, impeccable ethics, integrity, and professionalism, and a willingness to be around sick and injured people. Because of the nature of x-rays, they are very good at looking at the bones of the human body. Therefore, a detailed understanding of the human skeletal system is crucial to being a good radiographer. Can you point out some bones for me? I want to start with the atlas. Okay, back. Start with the first one. All right. And the axis? Right up there. All right. And show me where the calcaneus is. Right here. Okay. And the capitate. And the cervical vertebrae. Capsis. Your neck. Awesome.
Christine, can you show me the concert? Sure. It's right over here. What about the keyboard? Keyboard? That's going to be down here in the parcels. Show me the distal phalanges. What about the F point? That's in the skull. Point to the femur. And the fifth one. Brittany, can you show me the frontal bone? How about the hammy? Your hand. And the humerus. The hyoid. Right under here. And the ilia. Right here. And the anus. That's inside of your ear, one of the ear ossicles. Christine, can you point to the interior navel concha? Yeah, it's going to be these little hooks right here. What about the intermediate unicorn? Yes. It's going to be this one right here. Right here. What about the intermediate flanges? These things are going to be these ones right here. Mm -hmm. What about the ischium? Ischium. That's going to help us. The lacrimal? And the lateral view. Right there. Can you point out the lumbar vertebrae? Okay. Five in your lower back. Great. And the lunate? The malus? Will be one of the ear ossicles inside your ear. The mandible? The nubrium and the maxilla. Today we're on a rad quest field trip. We're in a hospital learning about x-rays. X-rays are pretty cool because you can actually see inside the body. But how does that work exactly? I have a lot of questions. Hi, I'm Olivia. Hi, Olivia. I'm Chandra. I'm a radiographer. What I do is I take x-rays of the body and allow doctors to see inside the human body using a machine like this. We're able to take x-rays of your arm, see if you have a fracture and if you need a cast. We can also take x-rays of your lungs to see if you have pneumonia. I hear you're on a rad quest today. That's pretty cool. What else would you like to know? Well, I know what an x-ray looks like, and my little brother got some x-rays when he broke his wrist. I guess what I'd really like to know is, how does an x-ray work? That's an excellent question, Olivia. So x-rays are a type of radiation. You can think of them like an energy source similar to light. However, light has a much lower frequency and can be absorbed by the skin, whereas x-rays have a much higher frequency and they can go through the human body. As x-rays pass through the body, some of our energy particles called photons are absorbed and some pass all the way through. This pattern shows up on the images which are called radiographs. The parts of your body made up of dense materials such as bones show up as white areas on the x-ray image. The softer parts such as your lungs show up as darker areas. Did you know that the x-ray machine is the oldest and most widely used technology in the healthcare setting? Do x-rays hurt? No, they don't hurt, but excess radiation to the patient can be harmful. So what we have to do as the technologist is make sure to employ safe radiation practices and to use the lowest amount of radiation possible for the imaging procedure that we have ordered. What did you have to study to become a radiographer? Well, there's lots of different classes, anatomy and physiology, pathology, radiation biology, and radiation safety. Can you show me how it works? Absolutely. First, let me take this. I need to make some adjustments with the equipment first. I'm gonna move the x-ray tube up so we have some room to work with. Next, I need to move up the image receptor and this will allow us to take the x-rays at a better level for you so you don't have to stretch. Next, radiation safety is always very important so I need to put a lead apron in front of you to make sure any excess radiation doesn't get to you as the patient. Next, I'm gonna have you put your hand on this imaging plate here, just like that. And you'll need to stay really still for the entirety of this exam. Then I need to make sure I'm at the appropriate distance for the x-ray we're performing. Next, I'm gonna put on a lead marker and this tells the radiologist either the left side or the right side is being imaged. And last, I'll step behind that partition over there, set a technique, which is the amount of radiation being used, 
It's quick, it's easy, and it doesn't hurt at all. Thanks, Chandra. I learned a lot on this rad quest. X-rays are pretty rad. <laughs> What will you learn in your academic classes? Everything is designed to prepare the students to take the national board exam administered by the American Registry of Radiologic Technologists. This is a 200 question cumulative exam that, on passing, will provide the credentials you need, along with certain state credentialing, to work in the field of diagnostic radiography as an RTR. The four subject areas of this exam are patient care, safety, image production, and procedures. In patient care, you will learn techniques in class that are used in the clinical setting. For example, patient and technologist safety and professional issues, proper communication skills, medical emergencies and pharmacology, all modalities within the radiology field, pediatric, geriatric, trauma and mobile imaging, vital signs, EKG and venipuncture, and infection control procedures. In Seminar 1, Radiation Protection and Radiobiology, students will learn about the types and sources of radiation, radiation units, interactions of radiation within the body, early and late reactions from radiation, radiation monitoring, dose limits for exposure to ionizing radiation, Equipment design for radiation protection. Managing patient and imaging personnel doses during imaging procedures. In your radiographic imaging courses, you will learn about equipment and electromagnetic properties needed to produce x-rays, electron interactions inside the x-ray tube producing x-rays, x-ray interactions inside tissue that affect image quality, primary factors of image quality and their effects, secondary equipment used to manipulate the x-ray beam, various image receptor devices used to convert x-ray energy into a visible image, hardware and software aspects used to convert the analog x-ray source into a digital image for viewage and storage, and quality control techniques for technologists. In radiographic procedures, we will learn the 206 bones that compose the body. Basic terminology utilized in radiographic positioning. Demonstrating proper positioning of all the bones, the digestive, respiratory, and urinary systems. The proper use of radiation protective measures for our patients, visitors, and technologists during our practice lab sessions. We will demonstrate confidence and positioning through continual practice. And we need to understand the basic conditions as they apply to the anatomic area and the challenges this pathology can create in completing the examination. Let's check back in with Christine and Brittany. Christine, point to the medial cuneiform. What about the metaparcals? Those are going to be these ones. What about the metatarsals? Be down here. Point to the nasal bulb. How about the navicular? And then the occipital ball. Brittany, can you show me where the palatine bone is? Yeah, right in here. Awesome. What the parietal bone? Right here. Take And the patella? How about the piece of form? All right. And the proximal phalanges? And the pubis. Perfect. Christine, point to the radius. Sure. What about the ribs? Sacrum? A scaffold. This one right here. Point to the scapula. Yes. 
Because you want the spinner. Right there. Perfect. Make sure you want to stay pieces. They'll be inside of your ear. It's one of the ear obstacles. Awesome. How about the sternum? The talus. The temple. Thoracic vertebrae. They'll be one. They have one through twelve. Twelve. And the to do. Awesome. Christine, point to the trapezium. Is that the trapezoid? It's right next to it. The trapezoid. Oh, that one's right over here. Little piece of form. What about the ulna? Ulna? That one's going to be this long one. What about bone work? That's right over here. And the zygoma. Right there. Because clinicals will shape what kind of radiographer you will develop into, here are some important do's and don'ts to consider. Hello there, are you Mr. Mead? Yep, that's me. Awesome. My name is Josh. I'm going to be your technologist today. Um, do you happen to have your orders on you? Yes, here they are. Awesome. All right, great. Um, well, if you follow me back to the exam room, um, I'll go ahead and explain a little bit more about what we're going to do today. All right. Great. Yo, you here for an x-ray? Yeah, yeah, I am. Well, you want one or not? Yeah, my doctor gave me this order for one. You want it? Let's see it. Uh, nah, we'll figure it out. Come on. Okay, Mr. Mead, now for this exam, I'm gonna need you to lie on our table. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get you a stool to help you with that. All right. Do you need any assistance getting up on the table? No, I think I'll be good. Good, okay, well, if you change your mind, I'll be right here to help. All right, thank you. Uh -huh. All right, Bob, I'm going to go ahead and need you to jump up on the table here in preparation for the exam. All right, my name is Brandon. Uh, whatever, man, time's wasting. All right, let's get on the table. Yep. So, jump <laughs> Ah, God, rest. Watch, watch your head, moron. Okay, Mr. Mead, I'm going to go ahead and take a quick measurement of your abdomen for the exam. Okay. Sound okay. good? All right. Good. Okay, now if you'll just hold on for a second, I'm going to go ahead and get my control uh, booth set up for the exam and I'll be right back. Alright. Hey, is this going to hurt any? I don't know. Just hold still. A little more will hurt. All right, so it looks like I got all the anatomy I need, good technical quality, no rotation. I think we're good here. Okay, Mr. Mead, I got some really good quality images, and I'm going to be sending them over to the radiologist, okay? That was quick and easy. Is there anything else I need to do? Uh, no, you should hear something within a day or two after uh, the, your doctor reads the radiologist report, uh, but I appreciate you coming to see us today. All right, thanks. Yep. Man, you are sure messed up inside. I, I've never seen anything like this. What, what are you saying? Like, am, I, am I going to die? <laughs> By the looks of it, probably. But I have, I have two dogs. Well, all I can say is, since you're not going to need it anymore, do you mind if I take your coat? My coat? <laughs> Still not convinced that our radiology program is the right choice for your career path? Well, you don't have to take my word for it. Hi guys, um, I'm Grace. Uh, so why did I pick x-ray for my career? Um, pretty much I wanted to be in the healthcare field, but I know that I did not want to be a nurse. So I went on Midlands Tech website and see what exactly they had, um, cause I didn't really want to go to a four year college. Anywho, um, I seen that that was a two year program to do x-ray and yeah chose that and from there I found out that it was so many different routes that you can go so I am beyond happy that I pick this field hopefully you will be joining too 
One of my biggest reasons for choosing um, the Radiologic Technologist Program at Midlands Technical College is their reputation for producing the best radiographers. Um, based on what I have seen, potential employers just seem to know that they're going to get a great technologist if they hire a graduate from Midlands Technical College. Um, another big reason that I chose Midlands program is I knew that they had a great network of clinical sites for their students. And I think that the access to four different hospitals, including a level one trauma facility and many orthopedic sites, allows the radiography students to experience um, every possible clinical setting which is going to better prepare them for the different types of positions that they may encounter, as well as allow them to discover the work setting that they enjoy the most. Hello, my name is Paul. I'm a graduate of the Midlands Technical College Radiologic Technology Program, class of 2014. I'm here today to let you know how this program has allowed me to become successful in my current career. Currently, I'm an X-ray technologist as well as a CT technologist. In this program, you will gain knowledge in the classroom setting as well as the clinical setting. In the classroom setting, one of the biggest advantages that I have found is my intimate knowledge of anatomy. There aren't too many other healthcare professionals that will know more about anatomy than you when you are done with this program. You will also learn about illnesses, sicknesses, and how they appear on X-rays. In the clinical portion, of this program with the guidance of your instructor as well as other technologists you'll be able to go to the operating room the emergency room and the radiology department to apply your knowledge that you have learned from the classroom when you are through with the radiology program at Midlands Tech you will know everything you need to know and more to become successful best wishes and good luck to everybody thank you Hi, my name is Donnie Elgin. I'm a Midlands Tech graduate from 2019. And today I have my room set up for spine and pain therapy. After graduation, I became a C-arm travel tech. Today we'll inject steroids into the facets of the spine, either L5, S1, or C4 to C6. And I also do veterinarians once a month I also do labs in Georgia, which are very interesting because the doctors come in and work on cadavers, replacing knees and hips. Generally about 50 people in there from interns to physician assistants to, uh, and they all train and practice on the cadavers. It's so interesting. It's such a wonderful job. Another uh, case is I get our colon surgery in Charleston and it is incredible. It's a game changer for people. They do not leave the home because they either poop too much or they can't poop. And the doctor inserts a probe into the sacrum area around S2 and that contracts or loosens the anus. There's a little battery on the left side that's put in the buttocks and they have what looks like a little iPhone and it allows these people to go to the restroom. And when they come out of that surgery room, they'll grab my hand and just thank me. And it's really, really an enjoyable job. Thank you very much. Hi, my name's Greg. Uh, unfortunately, my house is very loud. Kids are going to school, wife going to school. So uh, outside it is. So a little bit about my journey through radiology. I went through the x-ray program 2014 to 2016. Uh, May 2016 I took my registry, June 2016 I took my CT registry. At the time they were allowing us to specialize if we were doing well clinically and academically. So I got my CT and x-ray almost at the same time. Uh, August that year I went on to get MRI and now I work <clears throat> at the Lexington Urgent Care in Lexington uh, doing MRI about 30 hours a week now. Um, I also have a job at Image Care where I'm multimodality so I will do MRI sometimes CT sometimes x-ray sometimes just depends on uh, what they need that day um, what's been kind of nice about being multimodality is I can also be called up to work at the main hospital Lexington so even though my job is MRI I know the CT protocols the x-ray protocols 
and because I've got my Squirza and ART in them, if they need help in x-ray, I can go help work x-ray for a day or two. If nobody's working PRN and CT and they need help, they can call me up and I can go work there too. So I can get my 40 hours, 50 hours. Um, it's it's kind of nice having uh, options available. One of the personal benefits is that having multiple modalities, uh, they typically will pay you a little more. So at Imaging, I'm considered a higher level tech than if I only did x-ray or only did CT and x-ray. Having three uh, gets me a little pay boost. Now concerning patient care, it also has its advantages because if a patient comes in, they're very worried about their results or they are too claustrophobic to do an MRI or maybe they have uh, allergy to iodine and can't get that test done. I'm able to better explain to them what their other options are. I can also explain to them better, hey, this is what they've done so far. Here's probably what they will do in the future. So there's really not much of a downside to having multiple modalities. It opens up more pathways for you. Uh, say you need to move and they need an MRI tech. Well, you can do MRI. Say you need to move somewhere else and they need a CT tech. Well, then there you go. Now you can do that as well. So. There's more job security in it, and I would say I feel better able to help my patients than if I only did one modality.